Okay, so I have been getting constant DMs about Liz, can you make a video about how to not be lazy, how can I be more productive, blah, blah, blah. Whatever, I'm gonna make this video. I'm gonna get really fast into it because I know a lazy person watching this will even be too lazy to watch this video. So let's get right into it. Let's get into the first point. Realize that nobody cares if you're lazy. You know what lazy people are? They're the forgotten ones. People that don't wanna do anything with their lives, they're, they will always just end up on the sideline. Everybody has problems. Nobody cares about your victim mindset and about how life was hard for you and how unfair it is. It's unfair to everyone, okay? To everyone. You're not special and life goes on. That's it. Life moves, everyone is busy with their own lives and so you have to do the same thing. Nobody will sit and pity, the, pity you, literally maybe for one or two seconds, okay? Like, oh, that's sad, but like, come on, we gotta get moving, honey. I had this uh, neighbor in the country where I grew up and where my family lives. This woman, she's literally like constantly complaining, constantly drinking. She's so racist. She hates Muslims and she literally terrorized us for the whole time we're living there. Um, and she's constantly just drinking her life away because, you know, she's sad and she can't accomplish anything, whatever, blah, blah. Me not my mom, she's literally an immigrant that fled from the war, that came, bought us a house, is taking care by her own of five children and just getting everything done. And do you think she complains? No. She has no option to be lazy. She has no option to play the victim. You know when lazy goes out of the door? When you're in survival mode. People that need to survive have no option to be lazy. People that are walking up on the stairs and they can barely breathe, they have no option anymore than to lose that weight. People that are so vulnerable and their bodies cannot handle of them being so underweight have no option but to gain weight. People that have to go to work because otherwise there's no food on the table have no option to be lazy. You guys that are just saying that, oh, I'm just lazy, whatever, you're privileged. You're speaking from privilege. If you have the option to be lazy, you're privileged. Hi guys, my name is Liz and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to become productive, how to overcome your laziness, and yeah, so keep watching. Before we get into it, I wanna say a huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you get access to over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists that can help you with a wide range of issues. get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to the therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. If your therapist is for whatever reason not the right fit for you, you can switch therapists with no additional charge. Basically, with BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism as an in-person therapist, and this is a therapist that picked for you. And you have way more flexible scheduling hours and at a way more affordable price. off your first month at betterhelp.com slash wizard list and i've also linked them down in the description below another thing you need to realize is the halo effect the halo effect is basically when we see like a beautiful person we will think that oh they are less likely to do something bad because we associate someone beautiful with a good person you know it's the same way the halo effect also works for successful people. So if we see a successful person, we are more likely to think that that person is successful in every area of their life. For example, they have a successful business. We will also automatically think they have, they're successful in their relationships. They're successful everywhere. We literally start to admire people that are successful and beautiful because we think that they have it all together. See, you know when you cannot benefit from the halo effect? Uh, when you're lazy, okay? It takes, it takes effort to be beautiful and to maintain beauty. I remember there was this one uh, supermodel, she talked about this. She's like, there was this one woman that commented and said that, uh, oh, why are you doing all this stuff to keep, take care of yourself and all these things? And she says, I have no other option. This is my career. Do you think she wants to literally like watch what she eats, go to the gym, do all these procedures to keep herself in shape? Probably not. 
Like, she probably not, you know? She just wants to sit at home and do nothing as well. She has no option because that's her career. She does all that stuff and takes care of herself. She can benefit from the halo effect. Same way when somebody goes to, like, has her own business, is working very hard to create wealth for themselves or independence or free. Same way. They have to work very hard to get all that stuff. But see, what you guys see is only the successes and, oh, she looks good and, oh, he has all the money. You guys don't see all the work that comes, like, behind it. These people have no option to be lazy. Yes, some people are born into wealth. They have it very easy and more easy than others. I know that this is also a privilege, but most people are not. And they also create it for themselves. Some people come from zero and create it for themselves. You know, it takes, it literally takes discipline. It's, you think these people want to do all that stuff? No. I know so many people, business owners and stuff that said like, I'm so frustrated. I like, but they rather have this than no freedom. They want the freedom, so yeah, then you have to put in the work. Another thing is focus on working on your life force. I was watching this uh, Netflix documentary. It's on uh, Jonah Hill's psychiatrist. Uh, he's, his name is Phil Stutz. He was basically saying that when you feel like you're lazy or whatever, the only thing you need to focus on is your life force. What is your life force? First things first, health and diet. You can focus on moving your body, doing some exercise, going to the gym if that's what you want, and the foods you put in your body. That's what you have control over right now. Make sure it's a foods that nourish your body. Make sure it's foods that don't spike your insulin or spike your glucose. So if, if you eat foods like that, that are filled with carbs and sugar, you're gonna feel lazy. You're gonna like feel like you don't wanna do anything throughout the day because you feel heavy. So think about nutrition. What are you putting in your body? How are you moving your body? Then second thing on your life force is your relationships. So what people do is when they get lazy or they don't feel good about themselves, they basically isolate. I do this. I start to isolate myself, right? I don't want to be around people. See, that's a bad thing you should do. You, what you actually should do is in that moment, you should connect with people. You should connect with your friends and family and talk to them about how you're feeling because that is much better than welling in your own self-pity, in your own like feeling bad about yourself. Trust me, I, because I do this all the time, it doesn't work. If you don't feel comfortable telling your friends, family, talk to a stranger. Talk to a stranger, just tell them or tell a therapist. Talk to a therapist and tell them how you're feeling and, and whatever you're going through. As humans, we need connection. If we isolate ourselves, we feel worse. We are social creatures. We need connection with people. And the third thing of your life force is you focus on the relationship with yourself. How are you treating yourself? How are you talking to yourself in your head? What are you even watching? What are you watching on your phone constantly all day? What are you watching? What are you engaging your own mind in? What is going on there? Are you journaling? Are you writing down stuff? Do you even have a relationship with yourself? And there's also one thing, yeah, people, they, they tell me like, oh, I can't manifest. When people cannot manifest is because they are not connected with their own energy. Manifesting is connecting with your own energy and working with your energy. But the reason that this day and age people can are unable to do that is because we're constantly on our phone and we're constantly distracted or we constantly go out with people and we're never by ourselves or we never take the time to sit with ourselves to meditate to write things down even writing stuff down if you just start to write things will come to you because sometimes God speaks to you your spirit guides speak to you but because your mind is constantly racing you cannot focus on that so you cannot accept guidance so you feel lost and you feel like you're alone but you're not alone you're not alone you're just not willing to listen if you focus on these three things health and diet, your relationships to people and your relationships to yourself, then you don't need anything else. If you just keep continuing focusing on this, everything else will fall into place, 100%. Create routines in your life and stick to it. Have routines. We as humans, we need routines. See, for me, I have a, a standard morning routine. I have a standard night routine. And throughout my week, I know when I'm going to the gym. I know when I'm doing what, when I'm creating content. I know these things. I have routines. And yes, sometimes I don't stick to my routines, but I have a base and I have always something to get back to when I go off track. Most of you people have no routines and just leave everything up in the air. We don't work like that. You need a structurized thing, you know? And some of y'all, I'm gonna call you out as well. Your house is dirty, yeah? 
you never clean your house one thing i cannot stand and i cannot work in is a dirty place i always need to clean and have a clean space because honestly a clean space is a clean mind if your room is a mess right now you go ahead you stop this video i want you to clean right now right now because that's huge disrespect to yourself not even cleaning after yourself there's a reason why you made this commitment and remind yourself of that reason. If you knew anything about me my whole life, I did not have social media. I was not that teenager that was on Instagram, whatever. I never wanted, never even literally considered it. The only time I've ever been on social media was to make a career out of it. Why did I want to make, make career out of it? Because I wanted to help my mom pay her bills and help her with her finances and help my family. Now I'm able to do that. See, when I get demotivated and I don't want to do this anymore and I don't want to do social media anymore because to be honest, to stand here right now and be judged by millions of people, millions of people telling me that I'm so dumb and what I'm saying is just common sense and whatever or that I'm ugly, it's not nice, okay? It's really not nice and I don't want to be the center of attention. But at the end of the day, I made this commitment to my, myself because I'm not gonna let my family suffer. I'm not gonna let my mom suffer. They have suffered enough. I have suffered enough. We deserve financial freedom and I'm gonna create that for us. And the same way, there's a reason why you make that commitment to yourself. Remind yourself, why did I even start? Why did I even want this goal? And you know, somewhere down the line, maybe you didn't even want this goal anymore. And you think to yourself, I don't want this. Okay, fine, then don't do it. Do something else, I don't care. But remind yourself, if you still want it, why do you want it? Why did you even start? Think about what story are you telling yourself? If you're telling yourself, story, oh, I can't do this because I'm just a lazy person. Yeah, that's then how you will act like a lazy person. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. What does that even mean? I'm just a lazy person. What does that mean? You think you, think you can use that as an excuse for the rest of your life? Okay, then go to the sideline. Yeah, and let people like us walk through because we don't need you on our way. Okay, because we're trying to do stuff. You could have been anything you wanted in your life. Literally, your mom, she carried you nine months in her stomach for you to come out and say, oh, I'm just lazy. Some people watching this are children of immigrants. Your, your parents have literally rescued your whole life, literally tried to give you the best life possible for you to sit here now and be like, oh, I'm just too lazy to do this. Are you not embarrassed? Get a hold of yourself, literally. You guys are lazy, but then you guys complain that you don't have the life that you want. Don't complain then, don't complain. You can literally change your reality at any second, you know, any second. Like right now, if I want to be overlooked and nobody cares about me, give me one month, one month, I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm not going to take care of myself anymore. hundred percent, I'll be overlooked. hundred percent. When I walk down the street, people will not look at me the same way. hundred percent. I can, then I'm changing my reality. I went from being this person to that other person. You can change your, your, your realities really fast when you start acting like the person you want to become. But no, Liz, it's uncomfortable because then I have to let go of my toxic boyfriend and this and that. Uh, but I'm still gonna cry about the fact that I don't have what I want. Another thing you should do is heal the past and move on. Listen, there's a lot of people that have experienced so much trauma. And then now they sit and they're like, oh, I can't accomplish anything because I've been through this, I've been through that, this and that. Okay, I've been through a lot as well. I, I've literally came two times a person tried to unalive me. It was very traumatizing for me. You know what I did? Instead of complaining, I went to a therapist. I even did hypnotherapies. I went to two years of intensive therapy and I healed myself from those things. Yeah, because I don't want to continue my life be the victim of a trauma. I'm not a victim. I don't even want to associate with it, okay? I don't want it to be my story. I can change my story around. And honestly, I'm telling you, once again, if you did not hear this in my other videos, if you're a victim of trauma or abuse or whatever, don't just go around and tell people because they lose respect for you. They lose respect for you 100%. I would have never ever in my life disclosed this to the internet or people if, if I was not trying to help people, because this is really something that people lose respect for. When you tell them, don't think that they feel pity for you. No, they see you as someone weaker, someone that went through something. It's really sad, but I'm telling you, this is the truth. This is how they see. You. So for yourself, go ahead, heal that. Heal. It takes years. Yes, it takes years. Okay, sometimes it, it goes fast. Sometimes it's, it's not fast. You can't control that, but at least work towards healing yourself. Well, if you're constantly living in the past and reliving it, your body literally will make you physically ill because your body thinks that you're, because you're feeling those emotions still. Your body thinks that you're still in that same situation. Your body doesn't know anything different. It only knows what you're feeling and what you're telling your body. 
So what you're repeating in your head, what you're feeling inside of yourself is what your body will create for you. If you want a different outcome and a different future, you have to do things differently. Not people around you should change. Not people around you should change their behavior. You, you have the power to control that. You have the power to control how you react. You have the power to control how you feel. Stop blaming other people. It's not their fault. Yes, maybe somebody did something to you. They traumatized you. That's on them, okay? They will receive their karma. If not in this lifetime, in another. God will punish them, whatever, okay? You have now the responsibility to heal yourself. You do. And you take that responsibility and go to your own next level. Because when you're stuck in the past and being terrorized by the thoughts of the past, you cannot go forward. You cannot move on. Another thing is, are you lazy or did you stop progressing? Like I said in the other video, the only reason that people become happy is because they constantly progress. When people stop progressing, that's when unhappiness becomes. Like literally, you can be a millionaire having everything, but because they, they don't have anything anymore that excites them, they become depressed as well. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much you've accomplished. We constantly need that drive or something to strive for. So ask yourself, am I lazy? Or do I just not find excitement in things anymore? Learn a new skill then. Find a new hobby. Create a new project. Do something else that you haven't tried before. Or do something that you used to love. Pick it up again, you know? But don't allow yourself to stop progressing because when you stop progressing, that's when you stop living. Don't allow yourself to be like that. Too much information makes us lazy. See, because we're constantly scrolling on every app, whatever, we're scrolling on social media. We hear this diet is perfect. We hear this is the best shampoo now. This is the best way to do skincare. So we go literally insane because there's so much information and we don't want to do anything anymore because we don't even know what to do. There's so much information. But because we're so consumed in that, we start to literally become consumed in other people's opinions, in other people's lives, and we start filling their lives with our energy. That's it. And then you wonder to yourself, like, huh, why do I not have any energy for myself left? Because you're too consumed in other people's lives. So you're not living your own. You know, when I spend the day scrolling on TikTok, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything. Literally, I just, literally, my brain is fried completely. And I don't, I just want to lay down and do nothing. If I decide to have a lazy day, and I call them lazy days, I'll watch Netflix shows, I binge watch them, I don't want to do anything else. Literally, my mind is shut off then, you know? If, if you are also a person that constantly goes out and parties, that's it, energy drained, my love. Constantly drained. But recently, uh, my friend, she took me out because it was her birthday, so then I thought, okay, let me go out. I went out with her. The whole night, I did not have one thought in my head. And I have a mind that's racing. I'm very, very creative. I constantly have ideas in my head. And I constantly also get messages in my head. That whole night, I had no idea. Nothing, nothing. My mind was blank. It was almost like I was like brain dead or something. I was just standing there. Like, you know, what happens? Too many energies around you. Too many energies. And you're, they're completely draining it. So that's why sometimes in order for you to create or, or in order for you to be productive, you need to be in solitude. You need to be alone. You need to realize that feelings are not always right. Okay. Feelings are just feelings. You see, if we all just react out of emotions, I think everyone would just unalive each other. Oh, you made me angry. I'm so angry. Let me get something and just unalive you. You might feel like right now, oh, my heart is broken. I will never find something like that again. No, you will, okay? You will, you just feel right now really bad. So what do you do? You feel the feelings, you let them purge, yeah? Feelings purge by you feeling them. If you're gonna repress what you feel and you feel like, oh, I shouldn't be crying about this, I should be tough, nope. You're going to store those feelings inside of your body and they're going to come up later as physical illness. You cannot do that to yourself. If you feel bad right now and you feel like you want to cry or you want to scream, you do that because that is releasing your emotions. If you feel like you need to sleep a lot right now, sleeping is also healing. There is a reason why your body needs sleep because it's trying to heal. The feelings purge, let your body heal. But once that's done also, get up and do something okay don't stay there and dwell there for too long and it's also like oh i feel like i don't want to do this but what like what do you feel and what do you want okay because if you feel like oh i want to eat that uh whatever i want to eat unhealthy this and that but then 
you want that dream body of yours, it doesn't correlate. You need to have discipline, my love. Like, you know, you can't just consume into what you're feeling and then expect what you want to happen to happen. It doesn't work like that. Another thing is courage is being vulnerable. Courage is going out and meeting, meeting new people and putting yourself out there and being vulnerable. It might not feel good to you because honestly, this I'm just speaking for myself right now. I isolate myself. I constantly isolate myself. Anyone that lives like where I live will tell you I don't come out. Any of my friends will tell you I do, I do not leave my place. You know? Do you think that's courageous of me? No. I'm trying to protect myself. But because I'm trying to protect myself and I'm scared of being vulnerable, I don't live any experiences and life is just going by like this. I'm young. I'm supposed to be living my life. I'm supposed to be meeting people, getting my heart broken. I'm supposed to have experience. I don't have any of these because I'm so afraid of getting hurt or betrayed by friends. You think that, that that's happiness? No, you're not living, you know, and it makes you lazy as well. Because you're like, okay, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm not going to surround myself with people. I'm not going to try to do anything. That's not courageous. That's weak. Courage is being vulnerable. Go out there. Meet new people. I'm not saying do something risky and then put yourself in danger. But do something that normally you would feel uncomfortable doing or you rather prefer not doing it. Another thing is learn to ask for help or learn to accept help. See, most of you guys' issues is the fact that you don't accept help. Oh my God, like I have so many people around me that are like, no, I don't want help, I don't want help. And then they struggle so much to accomplish this thing. Meanwhile, I could have fixed it for them in one second. You need to start accepting help from people. Sometimes God sends these people to help you, okay? That's how you have to see it. And you have to receive. And then you, like if you don't, you get angry. You're like, God, you never help me. Like, why don't you help me? And God says, like, I send this person to help you and you refuse them. How do you want God to help you? Also, ask help from God. Ask help. Ask help. You will receive help in very miraculous ways. I've done it myself. I always do it. Another thing is be productive on your own terms. Think about what does productivity look like for me? If I say, for example, go to the gym, do this, do that, but you think like, but that's not what I want to do. Like, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to do these things. Okay, fine. That's not for you. That's not how you are productive. You have a different sense of productivity. So think to yourself, what is productive for me? What do I think would be like, oh, okay, I'm a productive person if I do these things. What are your goals? Create that productivity mindset for yourself and Create a vision of what that looks like for you. Don't listen to these other people because what works for them might not work for you because that's not what you want. Another thing is, are the people around you draining your energy? If you have toxic friends, if you have toxic family members and you're constantly just engaging with them, you're constantly just around them, you're gonna feel bad. Look at the people. Look when you feel bad. What people are around you. When you feel your worst, and sometimes even you start to hate yourself around certain types of people. There are certain types of friends that bring out a side in you that you don't like about yourself. Watch out for these kinds of people because you might feel like when I'm around them, why do I behave like this? You know, you're getting influenced by them. So it's better to distance yourself. And when you are more stable in who you are and, and you don't get influenced by others easily, then if you want, you can be like friends and stuff because they cannot do anything. You know, it doesn't affect you. But when you are easily influenced, distance yourself from these kind of people. If you have toxic family members, distance yourself. Make sure you can stay away as much as possible and focus on the things that you can focus on right now. And nobody can make you feel anything. Nobody can make you feel sad, bad, upset, whatever. You can only do that to yourself. You have control over how you feel. If for example, one person, when I used to be younger and I didn't know this knowledge, when somebody made me angry, I would think like, oh, they're so bad. Like I hate them, whatever they did this with ill intent. Yeah. And I would get angry. Now, when somebody does something to me, I think to myself, well, then there must be something that they're judging in me because they're judging it in themselves. 
they're projecting, there's something wrong, maybe something, ha I, I have a different kind of understanding and I have compassion for this person. I, I feel sad for them. It's a different energy and it's a different feeling. And why can I control that? Because I control how I feel. I can feel sad for them if I want, you know? I can also feel happy that they showed their true colors to me. So change your perspective on things. How do you, how do you view this person? How do you view the situation? Same way if you're going through a breakup, you can see it as like, oh my God, it was the last man on earth. I cannot live without him, blah, blah, blah. Or you can see it as like, oh, okay, our souls were meant to cross because we were meant to teach each other something in this lifetime. And then we meant, were meant to separate because it was not meant to be forever in this lifetime. That's it. He learned his lesson. I learned, I learned my lesson. And now we can go our separate ways and go to the level that we were both meant to be at. And last but not least, Focus on the things that you can do. I always hear people, oh, I can't do this. Oh my God, I can't. I... What can you do? What can you do? What are you good at? Huh? Tell me three things right now. What can you do? Think about these things. What can I do? What am I good at? What am I passionate about? What makes me happy? Who makes me happy? You know, be, be grateful for these things. Realize you can do a lot and remind yourself of what you actually can do. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah, I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.